Yes, may I help you? Hello, Mrs. Crane. This is Reggie, the chauffeur. I know, Reggie. What do you need? I know you're interested in information on Ethan Withrow. Mm-hmm. Yes, what happened? I brought the limo into Jerry's garage for an oil change, and, well, it's weird. Mr. Winthrop is here, working. Working? He's a full-time mechanic here. Since when? I don't know, ma'am, but he's here right now. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm on my way. Thank you. Hey, Ethan. It's a customer yeah. waiting to talk to you. <sighs> customer? I just started here. How could I have a customer request? Am I a mind reader? Come on out from under there. All right. Where's this new customer? Uh, right here, Ethan. What are you doing here? Well, I came to ask you a question. What are you doing here wasting your life in a garage? Hey, lady. Where do you get off talking to my new mechanic like that? He's not wasting his life. I run a good shop here. I'm sorry. Um, I know that mechanics make a very good living. However, Ethan has a law degree. He was editor of the Law Review. Did he tell you that? So why would a man like that spend his life working on cars? Hey, it's not my fault that some uptown rich bitch has got him tied in knots. He can't get another job. Um, listen. I am deeply, deeply sorry that I have offended you in any way. May I have a few minutes alone with him, please? I guess. So, what the hell are you doing here? And uh, how did you know I was working here already? Ethan, come on, please. You know me better than that, right? I'm head of the Korean Empire. I've got eyes and ears everywhere. You know, you sound more and more like Alistair every day. Okay, you know that's not true. I want to do good with my power. And actually, I want you to help me do good, but no, you've refused. Now look at this place. Look where you are, Ethan. Yeah, you know what? I like this place. I like it. And the only reason I'm here, Teresa, is because you have barred me from working anywhere else. You can come back to work at Crane anytime you want. Forget it. You would kill for that, John. You're just worried about being alone with me and working with me, right? Stop it. Aren't you afraid, Ethan, that if we spend time together, if we're near each other day after day, you will forget your guilt, you will forget your duty to Gwen and betray your marriage vows? Ethan, your fears are why you're working here. You're afraid that you will finally give in to temptation and be with a woman you really love. Me. <sighs> Teresa, wake up. All right, I'm not, I'm not afraid of giving into temptation with you. My marriage is as sound as a rock. Um, if that is true, Ethan, why don't you come back to work at Crane? Because you're relentless, Teresa, because you won't stop pursuing me, that's why. You'll probably chase me around the office building. You'll probably, I don't know, chase me into the men's room, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah, well, it, you know, if I don't tempt you, why should that bother you? That is it, isn't it? Ethan, you're afraid that you cannot say no? Boy Scout Ethan Winthrop is mesmerized. He's like a moth fluttering around the flame of sin. It is exciting, Ethan, isn't it? Get away from me, all right? And how much harder it must be when you're actually in love with a sin the way that you are me. You're absurd. I'm right. I am what you want. I'm what you cannot resist. You can't control yourself around me, Ethan. You cannot resist the temptation. Look, hey, I mean, do I look like some teenage boy that can't control himself? You're not a temptation to me. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. 
Now tell me that you aren't tempted. 